Hello, you might know me as Ramon, celebrity skin nano influencer to my mom, but in reality, I'm Ramon, the person who made a lot of skincare mistakes in my life. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be basically talking about a lot of the things, a lot of the mistakes, a lot of the regrets I made in my skincare journey to get to this point, and basically the things I learned to combat my cystic acne, deal with my hyperpigmentation, and really like elevate my skincare game. Before we get into today's video, if you like today's fur coat, if you like me and my channel, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you know when I post more videos like this. Hit that thumbs up and comment down below what are some of the skincare mistakes and regrets you got in your life because I mean, we all did some dumb stuff in our lifetime, trust me. So, skincare mistakes. I really factor this into three main categories of things, clauses, nouns, and those are cleansing related things, lifestyle related things, and TLC related things. So, let's start with cleansing. First and foremost, the art of double cleansing. Basically before, I remember back, back, back in the day, I just strictly remember a conversation I had with my dad and my stepmom in the car back when I was like 15 and they were like, your skin's like bad. And I was like, yeah. And they were like, you need to cleanse your face twice. Take this really astringent Neutrogena bar soap and wash your face twice over. Your skin's really oily, but it's gonna suck up all that oil. And I was like, you're so right. That's an amazing concept. Um, it's not the kind of double cleanser we're talking about. Really what this focuses on is, again, I'm someone who has really acne prone, really oily skin. And essentially what that is, is taking some form of a pre-cleanse and going in with a following foam related cleanser. That pre-cleanse, generally oil-based, I like a balm or oil cleanser, but micellar water works fine too. It's going to basically break down any oil, sunscreen, makeup, grime, impurities on the face, get that off, either mechanically or by rinsing it off after it's become um, emulsified with the oil and whatnot. And then going in then on a very clean slate with a nice foam cleanser to really get in there and get you clean. Doing that changed my life. I remember I would go in after what I thought was a good cleanse with just one cleanser, mind you, and take a toner on a cotton pad because I was back when I thought toners were part of your cleansing routine. And that shit was grimy. Now I can go in and I'm a thousand percent confident with a balm cleanser and a gel cleanser that if I were to go in with a cotton pad and a toner, clean, immaculate, pristine. Next step type of cleanser again the kind of cleanser you use are really important and i was from the school of you need to strip your oily skin of all the oils and all the nourishment so that you have a really astringent very stripped face and using very alkaline very stripping cleansers is not the tea trust using very ph balanced nourishing really replenishing cleansers really did a lot for my skin i always talk about the cerave hydrating facial cleanser dr Dart's microfoam is one of my favorite cleansers and those are really nice ph balanced cleansers that do the job without being too alkaline without stripping my skin. If you don't strip your skin too much, you don't gotta do a lot to really replenish what's missing from it. Number three for cleansing is hair cleansing. Yeah, I used to like put a lot of product in my hair and then like sleep with it in my hair. And on top of that, I would always wash my face first out of the shower and then go shower and wash my hair. What's here can end up here, especially if you're like sleeping and like this is on your pillow and then you like rub your face on your pillow like I do. Or if you wash your hair and you have a lot of A stuff in your hair, but B the, all the stuff in the shampoo and conditioner start to like drip down to your face that affects your skin so i don't do that anymore i either tie my hair with like a silk wrap before i go to sleep i change my pillowcases out frequently or if i really feel like it i'll cover it with a towel and if i it's a hair washing night i will balm cleanse go shower wash my hair and then wash my face after washing my hair but understand what is up here always comes down here trust so that changing that routine like changed my life i basically got rid of all the little tiny bumps I would always get on my forehead and I would get some welts on my forehead. When you get those cystic acne breakouts on your forehead, that is just like a pellet under that skin. Fourth thing I did cleansing related that changed my life was not cleansing in the morning. Again, I'm someone who I am very confident now with my cleansing, but there was a point where I was still cleansing in the morning with a foam cleanser and it was like really stripping my skin. And at one point I just realized like all I'm doing at night is like really nourishing, really replenishing ingredients in terms of my skincare. I don't sweat at night. I don't have oily skin while I'm sleeping. Why am I cleansing in the morning? Why am I stripping my face more? So I just did a rinse. And then I would go in with all my stuff to like really like that moisture, protect my skin. And like, that was game changing. Like my oiliness throughout the day, like was really diminished and it did a lot for like 
changing my skin. So AM rinse instead of cleansing really worked out for me. So with those cleansing things, let's get on to lifestyle things. These are tips, tricks, hacks I learned or I live by to kind of help my skin as well. First things first, not touching my face. I don't touch my face, period. I don't eat a lot of food with my hands, first and foremost. I use chopsticks, I use forks. I'll do what I can to not pick up a sandwich or a pizza with my hands, or I'm really mindful of washing my hands. But something I'm really mindful of is like, what's on my fingers gets on my face. Especially when I'm like on my nasty phone and I'm touching like stair rails and all that stuff. Like what's on your fingers gets on your face. That's bacteria on your face that cause breakouts. Don't touch your face. Just know that now. I see people that do this a lot and whatnot. And sometimes I play with my own beard and where I have my beard, I do get breakouts because of that. But if you get breakouts, think about where you touch your face. Number two, and I kind of touched on this already, is pillowcase. Clean your pillowcase frequently. Again, if you have products in your hair, that gets on your pillowcase. If you're like me and you drool a lot in your sleep, that's on your pillowcase. Ideally, you need to be cleaning your pillowcase every week every couple of days if you can. If you don't like to do that, something that I like to do is I rotate my pillowcase or I will cover it with a towel. Or if you want to get real bootleg, I will put a t-shirt over my pillowcase because I can wash a t-shirt a lot easier. But yeah, be mindful. If you're breaking out, think about where you sleep and if the, your pillowcase is to blame for that. Then the third thing for lifestyle is talking on your phone. I honestly think this was a really big factor. I used to get the worst cystic breakouts like right on my cheekbone and in my temple area. And then I realized it was literally from just talking on my phone. Like you ever talk on your phone you're like chit-chatting with your mom talking about some gossip and then you hang up and you look at your phone screen and you see like a grease mark that's on your face and just like grease gets on your phone whatever's on your phone gets on your face and so i'd get the worst cystic breakouts and i realized i don't need to be talking on my phone like this i have speakerphone and i got headphones but the minute i change that all of my breakouts in this area of my face greatly diminished so you'd be surprised. Your phones are nasty. Everyone knows that. But like that bacteria gets on your face, causes you to break out. Quit talking on your phones like that. Get yourself some AirPods or something. So and then we get to the last step or the last little category of skincare things. And that's TLC. And these are things in relation to how I treat my skin, how I used to treat my skin, and how I will go on treating my skin in terms of products and behaviors. First and foremost, no DIY natural. And in this, I'm not talking about like natural skincare at Sephora. I'm talking about like making some bootleg concoction in the kitchen. I used to do this mask that was honey, nutmeg, and cinnamon and when i tell you that sh birds my face i remember i was like 17 i was still at my parents house i did this mask once before work and when i got to work someone was like why do you look sunburned whatever was in that mask i don't know if it was the nutmeg or the cinnamon just like my whole face was just red and flamed i've done egg whites i've done i heard saw one thing where it was like take the membrane of the egg so like if you like look at the eggshell from the inside there's like this like weird membrane on it take that membrane and put it on your breakouts to heal it i've done every possible like diy kitchen food related hack they don't work they actually do more damage to your skin quit doing diy shit to your skin it doesn't help your skin especially if you have really problematic breakouts no. Number two is not overreacting. I'm I am someone who I like instant gratification. I'm also someone who I need to see a result by yesterday. And I would start freaking out when I would get really bad breakouts. And one night of putting toothpaste on a breakout to dry it out didn't work, which that in itself is a whole thing. Don't do that. And because one thing didn't work out, I would try to do seven more things on top of that to try to make a breakout go away or to try to reduce my breakouts and inflammation. And it's kind of like when you do too many actives in one night, if you do too many exfoliants, you're causing your skin barrier to go into overdrive. You make your skin more oily you make your skin more inflamed and irritated and it really gives you the opposite result of what you were going for not overreacting and just kind of understanding it's going to take a minute to see a result you need nothing happens overnight game changer and this goes with the third thing on my list which is patience understand that once you get yourself on a good routine it still might take you a week two weeks a month two months to see any form of really nice results that you're looking for i mean i've been on retinols now for like two three years and i just realized in the midst of this whole quarantine i'm like this is the best my skin's ever looked and it's taken years of learning about skin and ingredients really getting on a good skincare routine track learning what works for my skin to get to this point but if i would have known at 15 that i would look like this wouldn't believe you this next part is called nourishing and i broke it into two parts the first one is not stripping my skin and the second part is vitamins first part with not stripping is i understand now that like a lot of really taking care of my skin is actually hydrating it and nourishing it and not taking away a lot of things from it so the second part is vitamins and that's vitamins a b c E. I can't read so I forgot the rest of the alphabet, but introducing those kind of ingredients in my skincare routine, retinol, niacinamide, vitamin C, vitamin E, those are great ingredients for my skin. I talk about it in my Actis video and I've shown you in my routine all the variants of those ingredients that I use in my products, but nourishing my skin with those amazing actives has done a lot to change my skin. Find out what versions of those and which in those ingredients work best for you, but 
vitamins. The next step is hydrating and moisturizing and really understanding the difference between the two of those. Understanding the proper way to really moisturize your skin and maintain a really nice moisture level in your skin to maintain a really nice moisture barrier in your skin. First of all, I don't dry my face after I rinse or cleanse my face. I leave my skin damp so that way my skin is able to more readily accept hydration and then as a result more readily to accept active ingredients. I really layer on really nourishing essences and hydrators in my toners and then my moisturizers as a result i use a gel cream but i understand good moisturizers have humectants emollients and occlusives to really lock all that in and so i understand now that like on top of not stripping my skin learning how to nourish it through really good hydration and moisturizing is key even though i have oily skin look at my skin no breakouts that being said don't go ham i use a layer or two of an essence really if i feel i really need some hydration i might go in with a layer of a really hydrating toner but usually right after this i'll go in with whatever's going to seal this in for me and then the next thing is sunscreen <laughs> Again, after years of dealing with acne, I had a lot of acne scarring. I also have a lot of different things in relations to sun-related exposure. And really understanding what sunscreen can do for skincare routine is amazing. Especially when you're working on so much in repairing and targeting specific skincare concerns. Without sunscreen, everything you do work-related is often like just like worthless. I wear sunscreen every day. My acne scarring is almost gone. I see such a great result in terms of like my areas of congestion because UV exposure can oftentimes oxidize sebum, which can lead to other effects in terms of poor congestion and breakouts. Find a sunscreen texture that works for you. And I talk about sunscreen in a lot of my videos and I will forever talk about sunscreen. Understanding the importance of sun care and the negative impacts of UV lights game changing for skincare routine. And the last thing is basically listen to your skin. That's something I talk about all the time. Listening to your skin, listening to how it reacts, listening to how it feels in the day. You can't necessarily use the same exact routine and the same exact steps every single day, day after day. Your skin's gonna feel different types of way one day after another. After I've been in the sun all day, my skin feels really, really dry and tight. In the middle of winter, my skin also feels dry and tight. But sometimes in the middle of summer, when it's just hot and muggy, my skin feels gross and heavy. And I tailor each day's routine and each day's products to how my skin's feeling that exact day. After that, if I try a product and my skin's really reacting, I know that product's not for me. I'm gonna cut it because it's not doing what I need it to do and my skin's adversely reacting as a result of that. So listen to your skin. Don't do the most on your skin. I see uh, Sean Garrett and LA Beautyologist Nye on Twitter talk about this a lot where people, because these people do a lot in their own routines and they see all these products do these things for people, they layer all these products that are really redundant in a routine. So like five humectant factors and like three exfoliants in a night and you don't need that cut back a lot. It, cutting back in my skincare routine really did a lot to me in terms of like not doing a lot to my skin, letting my skin really heal itself, but also give it what it needs to get to that point. More is not more. Less is oftentimes more. Don't do a lot. So listen to your skin. And yeah, those are basically a lot of the tips and tricks and hacks and things I had to go through to learn how to properly take care of my skin. So I'm passing on that wisdom to you because I wish someone would have told me all these things all in one go. If you have any questions, uh, leave those in the comments down below. If you want product recs as well, leave those in the comments down below. I love talking to you guys. I love interacting with you guys, going back and forth, fangirling over things. Feel free to hit up my DMs on Instagram and Twitter as well. Those are in the description box. If you like this video and you thought it was really useful, give it a thumbs up so I know that it was worth making for you guys and subscribe to my channel so that you can see all the other videos I upload all the time. And yeah, thanks for watching guys.